Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we're going to go over some important things. It's a reminder of what you agreed to do, which is an exit strategy. Now, right now, I know everybody's talking about how fantastic Bitcoin is doing and it's going to go to the moon and everything else. But just remember, if you have a plan in place, you need to follow it. Because like my man Jocko says, discipline equals freedom also. We're going to have Alex Mashinsky from Celsius on the show tomorrow. Uh, we'll be asking him some questions, so it'll probably air on Friday. And we really need to get to the whole basis of what is going on over there. And finally, we'll take a look at Q of the day, where we have a interesting tax question. So we'll get to all that. But first, take a look what's going on in the market. So today, it is November 18th. It is 9 a.m. Texas time, trying to get things done early. So what do we have? So Bitcoin did touch 18K, and that's pretty fantastic. Now, it has uh, retreated a little bit to the 17.7 mark, but uh, <laughs> it's been a fantastic week, let's be honest. It's at 16% up for the week, 3% for 24 hours, and uh, everything is looking pretty darn good. Now, yesterday, I talked about don't FOMO in and dump all your money into Bitcoin. And people were like, wait, this is different than 2017. This is going to be totally a, a new aspect of cryptocurrency digital assets. We're going to go to the moon and nothing's going to stop us. And I'm like, wait, I'm telling you right now, this is not my first rodeo. Yes, 2017 was a little bit different. It was a lot of retail investors. Yes, it is true. We've got a lot more institutional investors. But here's the thing. These institutional guys, they've been doing this for a long time. And if you don't think they don't aren't, aren't going to pull out all the stops and all the tricks they know to lower the price a little bit, buy in a little bit more, and then bring it back up, and then bring it back down, and so on and so forth. If you don't think that they're going to do those types of things and tricks that they do in the traditional market, I think you're mistaken. I could be wrong. But uh, really, what I'm going to see, what I think is going to happen, and this is just uh, pure speculation, just like this entire market, is that we're not going to go to 65 or 150k overnight. It's going to take some time. We're going to go up. We're going to go down. We're going to go up and down. It's going to be two steps forward, one step back. Sometimes one step forward and three steps back. But uh, we're going to keep going uh, in, at an increase. Where it's going to go, I have no idea. But the big thing is to hold on to some of your money when you are buying in dollar cost average in because it is the safest opportunity. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen next week or a month from now. We don't know if we're going to have another situation uh, come up that really bottomed us out in March. I don't know if you guys remember, but in March, we went from a Bitcoin price of around 10K to like 4K in 48 hours or less, I think it was, uh, because of the uh, uh, COVID-19. So I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but those days, those options that if they do come about, you're going to be happy when you didn't dump every single dime that you had into cryptocurrency digital assets because you're like, hey, uh, I'm just waiting for some big dips. Now, the opposite is true. Yes, it's true. You could catch the tidal wave. You could be at the very beginning of the massive tsunami that is coming. But does that happen? Statistically, not. And I'm not here to tell you to just, you know, put it all in and just, you know, let it ride. Uh, really, just be disciplined. Just be an intelligent investor. And sometimes you're going to miss out on some opportunities. But for me personally, and you can do whatever you want to. Me personally, I think to myself, I'm going to miss out on some opportunities, but I'm going to try to play it as safe as I possibly can for the maximum amount of gains. And look, from outsiders looking in, uh, we're the crazy one. So when I say like play it safe, people are like, I would never put my money into Bitcoin. It doesn't even exist and blah, 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 right? Which is the things that we talk about on here. But uh, for me, I have a plan. I'm going to stick to that plan and I'm going to keep going forward. So Ethereum, uh, 470, not, not, real, not real much movement, so that's okay. Chain links up 3% to dollar, up, above 13, so pretty happy about that. Look at Litecoin, $70, not too shabby. 3% uh, down, actually everything is down. Wrap Bitcoin, 2.2, 5% for, oh, I guess, OKB. Okay, Everything's pretty much down, except for Celsius. Hey, Celsius above $2, congratulations all you Celsius holders. Pretty good week for you guys. We're gonna have uh, Alex in here to answer some questions, so that'll be good. 10% up for urine, I don't know why, sure. 2.7 for waves, gotta look into that project, looks pretty good. Compound down, actually everything's down. Um, my friend Jerry Hall, over on his channel, he doesn't get, uh, he doesn't get a massive amount of views, but he's, he says some really great things, pretty smart. And he had this comment today. I was listening to his video very early. And he said, you know what? Um, we talk about institutional investors coming in and how great it's going to be for the crypto market. He goes, but you got to remember, they're not coming for, you know, uh, coin market cap of, <laughs> of 287. 
uh, they're mostly coming for Bitcoin. And that's why we're going to see a, a pretty big uh, increase. And again, some people will say, well, with Bitcoin gold and blah, blah, blah. True. But you know what? It's uh, it's older. It's over a decade old. It's battle tested. It's never been hacked. There's been no 51% attack for some of the things that people talk about how great they are. So you just have to remember that uh, these institutional guys and gals, they're coming, they're looking for what's the biggest upside with the least amount of risk. So anyhow, that's it. Let's uh, move on. So before I get into the exit strategy, I'm really excited to have Alex on. Uh, they actually reached out to us and said, hey, we'd like to be on answer some questions, probably because I uh, decreased my portfolio from 30% to 10%. Not that I'm a big whale or something, but I do talk about it. And, uh, you know, I guess people also talk about it. So it'll be interesting. I watched his last AMA to see all the questions. And of course, they, yes, they did answer the questions about the DNS propagation and the website and the, uh, the app and everything else. But there was one in particular that really sparked my interest, which was the comment at 1556 to 2256, which, you know, was about six, seven minutes or so, which is how is yield created? And that's the big question for me. How is yield created? How are they able to get uh, a yield of 5% to 18% or whatever the interest rates are today uh, from all the different cryptocurrencies that we put on there? And really was Alex just going round and round. He didn't really answer the question. I'll just be honest with you. You can listen to it. Maybe I'm incorrect. Uh, I'll link it in the description, but it's the Celsius AMA. Uh, Friday, November 13th, uh, and you know, 8,000 some plus views. So I didn't really get the answer, but in one of those things, he did say that he's, he answered it in detail on a, uh, a podcast called Magnates. And he said, look for Magnates and look for, it's Finance Magnates, uh, just, uh, do, a, do a Google search uh, with uh, Finance Magnates and, and Miko. And this is the only one that I found. And it was an hour and 11 minutes long. And I, he goes, I answered the question about yield. I listened to the whole thing. I didn't hear anything about yield. I heard a lot of great things uh, about concepts, about you know where uh, the banking industry is going to go. Water kind of moves around the banks and, and and into it. Miko, if you guys haven't watched this, he's an extremely smart guy, uh, especially about finance and and the way that he talks about parallels. But again, I didn't hear exactly about how is yield created uh, for really anything, uh, especially for Celsius. Again, I could be wrong. I'll link that in the description as well. So when he gets in here. Uh, that's one of the questions I have. Now, whatever questions you have, please put them in the uh, comment section and we'll find out. I will say one thing though, as far as like yield, if Grayscale, and this is from Y Charts, if Grayscale can have a premium, which the premium that people are paying are for Grayscale to custody these digital assets, it's at 22%. So I'm thinking to myself, well, if Grayscale can get 22%, uh, why couldn't Celsius do the same thing? So if Celsius is getting 22, or if Celsius is loaning out the cryptocurrency that we give them to someplace else, and they're loaning it for 22%, then they could definitely do that. But the question really then becomes is how sustainable is it? And then I think to myself, well, even if it's not sustainable, it is right now. So I'm just thinking to myself, these are just questions that only Alex can really answer. And uh, I'm excited to have him on. So let's jump into the... Egg 